Okay, I've read that I have a sinner getting ready to go in. Since the front door, da, da, da. Uh, before I go in, I sit out and I pray and I ask the Lord to give me a good treatment, let everything go okay, and that I don't get sick. So I'll see you inside. Okay. You want to report this the needles going in? Everyone, this is where we start. These are, this is my nurse, Melissa. She takes very well care of me. At this point, she's taking off the wrap and getting ready to insert my needles. What is the wrap on for? Um, the wrap is for, we have to put cream on our arm and um, to numb it in order for the needles to go in or else there'll be a lot of poor nurses on the floor from getting knocked down. So. <laughs> but no, that's to help. Or uh, some of the times what they'll do is they'll um, inject our arm with lidocaine to numb it before they put the needles in. And the needles come in different sizes from 16 to 20 gauge, I believe they are, which is the biggest size. And um, I only use the second size, which is, I believe, um, 16. They're 16. So, this may be a little skirmish to some, but this is my life. This is why I'm doing this so that people can be aware of it. And for the, uh, my fight is to be transplanted. And I'm waiting for my match to come up. So until it does, this is what happens for three days a week. Are you nervous right now? No, because I know I'm in good hands. You know? Except for Melissa, this isn't. I think we need that other pillow. Oh, that's perfect. You know, well, you don't have to stoop over so much. put a band-aid on that. So I go get the stitches out and they gotta recheck it to make sure everything's working okay next week. It looks a little slow but you know what, let's let's go with it and see what happens. You gotta make sure it works today. I, I've gotta get some of this fluid off. So I'm starting to like the Pillsbury Doughboy. Woman. <laughs> okay, she's put in one needle, and I forget which one that was. Okay, this is our catheter machine. And what this does, this monitors our flow of our blood as it goes through. Uh, the machine washes as we call it and comes back in our body. This powder substance right here, it's what it is by the time treatment is done, it would be all liquefied. This is what's normally this is called bicarb and this is the detergent for our blood. When they hit this up to the machine, to these tubes here, so you see a venous and um, red is arterial. It goes through these tubings. It goes through this little circular thing right here. 
and down and around and it goes through this. What is this called here? The dialyzer. It goes through the dialyzer which it mixes with the bicarb goes through there and it mixes through here and it washes our blood. Then it brings it back out through this way, down from the bottom and back up through the tubing, back into our body, and the process starts all over again. These numbers up here is, it controls, it shows our blood flow, our blood pressure, and if we become in distress, the machine will start to beat for whatever reason. If the tubing's crooked, if it's kinked, if our blood pressure dropped, or any type of distress mode. Okay, and that's the process with um, showing you what the machine is and how it flows. And the next process is to hook me up. So, gotta go. The famous dialysis machine. This is the machine that I sit on for four and a half hours. Could you turn this around so I can get this? That I sit on for four and a half hours. And it, the numbers that you see up here is um, so blood pressure. It tells the flow of the blood that's going in and out of the arteria and the vena. Um, what else does it mean? If we're becoming in um, distress with our blood pressure and all that other stuff. So, oh, and that beautiful picture right there, that's of me. You know, not many people can take a really good picture, but I did. But, <laughs> anyway, so, and that's the filter that filtrates the blood. This here little window here is where the blood fills up. It goes around in this chamber, around, down through the cores, through the filtration, and cleans it out. Now, I'm getting ready to do some fun stuff. Getting ready to go on the machine. Okay, you only will see hands, you won't see the person. Okay. Thanks. Could you just look through there and see if it's if I got it focused? Move your finger. Yep. Does it go down a little bit? Turn it down like this. Yep, right here. My finger's not anyway, is it? No, because you're filming here. Oh, mm -hmm. okay. Because I'll be not film my thumb. Jesus, creepy. You got this all the way down? Yeah, it's taped all the way down. You gotta, I don't think I want to film that bird. Well, I can edit that out anyway, so. Just gotta tape it down so mm -hmm. it'll stay dry. Okay, now I hope I refocus it right again. And you may see some dry blood because I see it's still been oozing. Okay, <clears throat> what my nurse is doing right now is she's taking off the old bandage in order to get to the um, permacath. And when she takes that off, it's, um, she cleans it, makes sure it stays sterile, cleans. She pulls out the um, heplock out of the um, port, which is usually put in there to keep from bleeding. So, and um, she cleans all around the site and then she put the bandages back on once that's been completed. Is that focused? Yeah. You can put it across the thing. The bottom? Yeah. Under. Top. You got guys on it? Mm-hmm.
and I don't know how he got this thing in here, but it feels so tight in my neck. Mm -hmm. It's hard to move. My neck and shoulders hurting all the time. Okay, now that's been done and everything, now I get hooked up to the machine, which I'm going to try to turn a little bit so you can see how the process is done. What is this bike car? What is this bike car for? It does what? It does help clean thread. It's like okay. everything. Okay, this right here you see is called bicarb. And that's like the detergent that's used to clean our blood. This dialysis machine to us is just like a, a washing machine for blood, literally. And um, <clears throat> when it goes through the little chamber here, the bicarb goes through um, the system. It cleans it right through this little tubing right here. And once it cleans through that, it comes back out and it goes back in and the process starts all over again. Okay, now she's hooking me up. And you'll see in a minute, see the blood is being pulled out. <laughs> Once we open it up, the blood's being pulled out. And it's going through. It's filling up in the chambers. It's going through the other tubing to where it will start the process of washing it out. Once that tubing becomes full, that's when the process will start back and it'll make its way back in. And it just does this constantly for four hours until the treatment time is completed. You just pull that, I'll pull the machine over just a little bit. Okay, see now the blood is starting to make its way back into the chamber to make its way back in. And you can see it's filling up in this tube. Once it fills up in this tube, it goes back inside my body and the process starts all over again. So, this is what will happen for four to four and a half hours depending on our treatment time. And I can take this mask off now. And a lot of the times we have good success, no problems. Sometimes we have blood pressure drops. It depends, it really depends on that person. But that's it for right now and I'll finish up when my time is up see where I'm at after then. Hey, unfortunately, um, they have to take me off now. Um, my blood pressure dropped way, way down. It went from 110 over 50 to 77 over uh, 58. So that's very, very dangerously low to where they had to give me saline. I felt sick, lightheaded, dizzy, all of those things above. So now they're getting ready to take me off. This is one of the things that happens to us during dialysis, unfortunately. Our blood pressure can go so dangerously low that it can't send us and take a gist of heart failure. So, um, pretty much that's it on how I feel right now. This is my life.
unfortunately, because um, they had to take me off earlier, I'm losing time. So they're going to try to get me a spot in for tomorrow, if anything comes available. So maybe I can get a couple more extra hours. Yeah. Blood pressure came up. Is it back up now? Mm-hmm. What is it? Mm-hmm. What is it? Okay. Okay, my blood pressure's back up to um, once over. Once, what is it? 116 what? Will you give Patty salt while I return tea? 116 over 57. 116 over 57. So that's, that's good. Feeling better, but the treatment has ended. Because once they return you, generally they have to set the machine up to return you all over again. And as it stands, I only have 40 minutes left of treatment anyway, but it's still my treatment time and it's lost. But this is what happens. Sometimes we have to weigh the good with the bad. This is the importance of transplant. Okay, the video that I showed you this morning is pretty much what I have to deal with day to day dealing with this dialysis until I get a kidney transplant. Um, right now, today was not a good treatment. Um, not only did my blood pressure drop extremely, very dangerously low, it also I have still uh, an enormous amount of fluid still left on to the point to where there's a lot of red tape and whether I should or should not be hospitalized in order to get dialysis every single day for five days to get this fluid removed. Um, however, right now, I'm okay. I am symptomatic uh, with shortness of breath, but my faith, um, I, I know God's gonna take care of me and everything's gonna be fine. But pretty much uh, what is on here, you've seen, is what I go through. The beginning of this video, it shows where they were doing dialysis in my arm. However, the, my graft in my arm is having some major complications is the reason why that I'm having, I have so much fluid on because I couldn't get good dialysis. So now the port that you saw this morning that they were using is what's called a permacath. And when you're having problems with your graft, they use the permacath for that. So, but um, this is our life. This is why it's so important to be don that we get donors and want people to come forward. However, in that same breath, this is the reason why I'm putting this on here, so that people will open up their hearts and send a donation and towards my transplant so I can get this taken care of. Thank you, and may God bless you.